you know, it is embarrassing to see Bushiro tends to not give enough of what the collab deserves. Like, I know it might be the syndrome coming from the white one with half assing screenshot and everything, but I feel like, at least personally for me, if you're doing collab, you should be doing it in such a way that you are respecting the partner that you are collabing. You know, it's just a common theme of respect. Isn't that something you're looking for in Japan? But fortunately enough, I do feel the latest collab they decided to do with other entity and this time it's Wusapo, it's actually impossible. decent. I mean, at least the right line they are giving us, they are no. putting it into a proper art. Of course, there are things like triggers, PGs, orders. Those is a little bit annoying that they decide not to go full on for everything, but at least it's a step in the right direction. Can, Can you guys, guys see, see that, that I have a very low standard for Bushiro doing, doing the, the right thing, thing here? Of course! But regardless, in terms of deck building, is this actually good? And are these gonna be beating the king of budget deck in both English and Japanese format? Let's like, go. Well, the answer to that is not really. And you'll get why as we talk about all the three red lines that were released in this CBTO3. So before we get into talking about each of those red lines, there is a few deck building rules I want to point it out because I made the mistake myself. And that is, if you're trying to build a Wuzzable version of this deck, and by that I mean using the Wuzzable triggers and the PGs, or the order that is pertained to it, you have to use with support card only. You cannot mix the two together. If you guys can't feel on this deck building rules, just think of it as trying to put a nation card in any premium clan deck. Like for example, you're trying to put Kita cards in Shadow Paladin. Doesn't mean that you can put cards from like Angel Feather into your Shadow Paladin deck. The same ruling is applied here. Another thing I have to mention here with the right line is that all the grade 1 and the grade 2 units of Visible all have the same initial ability. And that is their skill only a lock if your vanguard is visible. So this is something I have to point it out because it is gonna be more or less the same for all grade 1 and grade 2s. So I'm gonna be focusing on the unlock effect rather than just the third part of the skill. So I believe I made myself clear. Okay, so now that all the weird rule has been laid out, let's start off with, in my opinion, the weakest right line out of the three, Runa, aka the ridicule representative. <laughs> Okay, calling Runa the wicked is not really right in my opinion, but to put it simply, her main mechanic is all about allowing you to play order twice, and most of her card doesn't really gain a huge amount of power, which is a little bit of red flag for me. But she does have a great utility. As you can see straight from the grade 1 Runa, where when wrought upon by grade 2 Runa, you can look at your top 7 card for either a wizard card or a normal order among them, review it, put it into your hand, and then shuffle your deck. Very simplistic skill and actually built toward what you exactly need for the deck itself. As we can see with the grade 2 version of Runa, where when wrote upon by grade 3 Runa, you can search your deck for one card named Kaga Sumere, call it Tureka Circle and shuffle your deck. This first unlock skill is more or less a common theme among all of the grade 2 version of the right line. The only difference is what grade 3 you need to wrote upon to trigger the skill and what other unit that is superior calling. But wait! And this unit second unlock skill is a very useless one. It's just a 15k attacker. If you play an order this turn, don't run this in any iteration of your deck other than in your right deck. You're failing on the highest level. And then we have the grade 3 version of herself, Perfect Aim Shinomiya Runa. This unit has three skill where during your turn, if your opponent rank card is grade 3 or greater, you can play two orders. And then once per turn act, you can solve last one, look at top 7 card of your deck, choose up to one normal order among them, add it to your hand, review it, and then shuffle your deck. Which is nice and all. And last but not least, the main attack skill. Where this unit attack, choose up to the same number of your regard as the number of order you play this turn, return them to your hand. And then you choose up to the same number of card from your hand, equal to the number of the unit that was returned by this effect, call them to regard circle. That's it? So you can kind of see that this feels like a rework version of Kyrie, and you would be right. Runa feels like what if you're trying to put Floresia and the original Kyrie together in like a Yuri room, and that's the shout that they produce. Use. That's literally her. And I'll say this now, in terms of utility, this is actually pretty solid as it allows you to look for order easily and considering her support is actually a good thing to do. But the problem I have to see here is that almost every single thing in her support doesn't gain power. So she rely on Tizuna riding a lot and on top of that, you do have to play two orders to actually get to full effect and even with that, you'd have to wait until your opponent is at grade 3 for you to actually play the full use effect. That escalated 
it quickly. So it is safe to say she is the most restricted out of the three. And this is considering on top of the fact that the lyrical order pools are good but not great. The only thing great about order engine in lyrical are the units that associate with it. You have like a counter charger, you have Straya which is free draws and power. That is pretty much about it. Not good enough! She does heavily rely on these expensive cards if you're trying to go for a really cool version of her deck. Fortunately enough, the visible version of her deck is a little bit better because of the fact that you do have two very easy to use order. Even though one of them is literally a copy of Reception of the Fame Demonic Mansion. Like it's literally the same effect but without the perks of having a dedicated unit of searching for the card. Except for Runa herself of course. But before that, we have to talk about the partner in crime of her deck and that is the card I mentioned earlier, Kaga Sumire. Particularly Freedom Violet Kaga Sumire. Her actual skill is when placed on Rekka Circle, Counter Blast 1, search your deck or drop for up to one card that is named Help the Hand Out Me for Yoneko, Koi to Rekka Circle in the same column as this unit and if you search your deck, you have to shuffle it. This is a common theme skill for all the great to support as well with the different being of course the unit that you are calling it out. And then this unit also has additional ability where when boost Y for Yaneko, if you play an order this turn, this unit get 5k until end of that battle. If you play 2 or more order this turn, counter charge 1. Hey. That's pretty good. This is a good card in a sense that like it allows you to spam Kaga in the earlier part of the game if you're running Ridical, allowing you to pay a lot of heavy cost order quickly and recover the cost very quickly as well. But you're still relying on those counter blasts every turn and currently Runa doesn't really have a way to super call Kaga back consistently enough. So there is that problem. But she won't be having an issue with playing two orders every turn because of Poyaniko, where this unit is a 10k card and nice. at the end of the battle this unit boosted Freedom Violet Kagasumire, put two Rekka in the same column as this unit into Soul, choose a normal order in your drop and put it into your hand. Not bad. So the great one support of the VTuber are more or less having a similar unlock skill where at the end of the battle it being boosted, it boosted the specific name. You can put two Rekka in the same column into your Soul to trigger different skills. So for Poyaneko case is adding one order back from your drop to your hand which is really really useful and needed for the decks that require you to play multiple order in a single turn like Runa. Overall, I can safely say Runa is playing like an order version of Kyrie, but it brings all the same problem that the Kyrie do have and that is the fact that both of these decks do lack power gaining skill and it requires your Rekka to gain big enough power to actually pressure your opponent instead. Even if her early game is good, I do still feel she is far from being the strongest among the three, especially you considering the, the second right line I want to talk about Emma is a huge upgrade to what Runa is doing and the deck that she's trying to imitate and in this case is Overlord. Why are you like this? Where the grade 1 version of Emma actually has a same exact skill as Agurate, you know the grade 1 Ganiwa, where if you have one or less Rekka and you would write the grade 2 from deck, in this case it's a grade 2 Emma, you can write without discarding but it has an alternate skill where if your opponent has 2 or more Rekka when you're trying to write, instead of you call this card to Rekka as a call, like a good red, you so charge two instead. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? And this deck will need a lot of so it can get. But before that, let's talk about Grade 2 Emma, which more or less had the first unlock effect as Runa, where instead of calling out Kaga, you are calling Kogara Toto instead. And then this also had a Burning Horn skill, where when your Grade 3 or Greater Wenka attacks, this unit get 5k until end of turn. Damn boy, he fit! And I would say this is one of my favorite part about Emma. You can have literally in the total of 8 different Surprise, Burning Horn Dragon in your deck, which is actually quite disgusting. If you think about it and especially you're considering Emma as a playstyle is literally an overlord with a soul heavy requirement. As we move into her grade 3 version, Sunlight Galaxy Aizawa Emma. This unit has two skill where once per turn you can soul blast 2 to draw a card and then choose one of your opponent's rear card and bind it. And if you do not bind a rear card by this effect, your opponent choose two cards from their drop and binds them. Genuinely and disgusting. And then at the end of battle this unit attack, you can counter blast 1, discard 1 card from hand, stand this unit and again drive minus 1 until end of turn. If your opponent by stone has 10 or more cards, or your personal wrote this turn, this also get additional critical until end of turn. This literally remove the weird gimmick of skill of like the original overlord with if it attack Rekka, it cannot be blocked and just simply allow you to pressure your opponent even further by one card stand with the additional critical. The drive minus one is definitely a stink, but it is 
is not the end of the world as she does have in my opinion one of the best type of control in the game right now and that is binding regards just like what i have said before in another video binding regards are a good thing because not a lot of deck actually interact this is on top of the fact that emma bind is easily one of the most annoying binds i have seen in the vanguard right now as not only you pluses you also guaranteed binds no matter the situation as you either bind regards on the field or you literally just bind your opponent drop zone in which for certain decks is actually their resources genuinely disgusting and some of you might be thinking 10 or more card in my zone might be a lot but i can simply say her partner actually fixed that issue and i would say you are getting to 10 cards faster than you think it is as we have anywhere my pace kogara toto where with the same first unlock up skill she essentially searched for onward together with toto gonzalez to the same column as this column like i said just now and she is also another burning horn where if you have gonzalez in the same column at this unit when you create your greater vanguard attack this also get 5k this means that this deck aggression is really really good but where is the binding part of this deck well it kind of relies on the great one that we are talking about earlier and that is gonzalez gonzalez has two skill where when placed on regard circle your opponent choose one card from their drop and bind it and then with the same condition as the second unlock skill as Poyaneko, choose one of your opponent regard bind it but if you did not bind by this effect your opponent has to choose two cards in the drop zone and bind it it was perfect perfect so essentially this deck punishes you for leaving your field empty because this means that if you are a deck that focuses on superior calling everything to the field retire or put this somewhere else by the end of turn that is the best target of emma deck in general which means that it hard counter in my opinion some of the more heavily used deck in the current meta right now and that is zoga and lua like any deck that has a reliance on drop zone gonna be suffering from this deck pressure but it does have a problem as well and that is the fact that the vanguard does still hit like a wet noodle while you have to make sure you can pull toto as soon as possible because that's allow you to essentially just cripple your opponent resource as soon as possible this is where i also say, have to say that unlike runa where she seemed to play better with both support cards this deck seems to play better combining with other cards from dragon empire especially other engine like latifa justinia and of course draco resonance and i feel like because of the fact that Dragon Resonance exists is the reason why that Emma has so much pressure considering the current meta right now and that's why I rank her as the second strongest among the three as the MVP of the three right line can safely go to Benny Are you serious? like I'm not trying to say this because she literally has a same playstyle as Baro Magnus but she just simply has everything that you need to be a main attacker in regardless of you're trying to build a support deck or you're trying to build a dusted version of her <laughs> <laughs> a bold claim. Starting off with her grade 1 version, she is literally just a versatile version of Jewel Core Dragon. What? What the fuck? Like, you look at the grade 1 Benny and you look at Jewel Core Dragon, it's almost exactly the same, with the only difference being that constant restriction I mentioned earlier. But overall, great start for the deck. Rajivo is, in my opinion, one of the best right line among all the Dusted decks, and half of the reason is because of Jewel Core Dragon, and she literally just takes the best part of it. And then we have the grade 2 version of her, where she more or less had the same first unlock effect as the other two, but instead, this time around, you are calling out Kurumi Noah instead and then she, when placed on Reka Circle she, you can put a card from your hand to your soul draw a card and this is gonna get 5k until end of turn I mean it's alright like so literally a better version of Rising Dragon because Rising did not even get its own power if you're playing it outside Lequia so a really good card unfortunately only works with support deck and then last but not least the reason why I feel Benny solidify herself as the best deck among the three Sweet Night Blood Moon Yakumo Benny at the beginning of your battle face all your opponent bank card gets minus 5k for every 5 card in your soul until end of turn and if your soul has 10 or more you choose one of your opponent red card and you may put it into your soul i don't like where this is going and then when this in attack counter blast one perform all the following according to the number of cards in your soul do note that this trigger all at once not one at a time as four or more you choose up to one card from your soul call it to regard circle nine or more this unit get an extra drive 13 or more this unit get extra crit that's amazing okay so it is a 
little bit of a business suite movement to have this kind of boss because for one you get a unit that essentially a modernized version of Barrow Magnus but at the same time this might also means that it is a day to a dream of Barrow Magnus getting a second form hello darkness my old friend and that applies to some of the other right line that they're copying as well except for overlord maybe but regardless this is a really powerful card especially if you're considering the power menacing is applied onto your opponent bank only which is a little but the thing is that this means that every subsequent attack your opponent is dealing onto their vanguard is essentially minus up to 20k accordingly and turning a barrel magnet draw into a drive is actually a really really good idea and all the restriction that was applied to this unit is 100% justified and i can safely say if you are barrow magnus stand like i do this might be the right line for you and i mean come on from a tight man to a succubus you can't say no to that right but many of you guys might be thinking isn't her right line doesn't really build a lot of soul and the answer to that is yeah it did not but fortunately enough her support fixed that issue and that's a good timing to talk about noah as noah helped you to superior call out fancy Hello. devil army roro which is essentially same effect as the other two grade two supports and then while your opponent card is grade 3 or greater and your soul has 2 or more Roro in your soul this unit gets 10k a little bit slow but I think with how much rush you can pull off with this deck even before you can actually reach grade 3 it's justifiable as the Roro effect is when placed on Rekha Circle choose a card from your drop and put it into your soul and at the end of battle this unit boosted Sugar Nuts Kurumi Noa the same skill condition as the other grade 1 supports draw card that is so good like that fixes all the problem that original Barrow Magnets had and that is shit hand size. So Benny is essentially a Barrow Magnus that actually can do early rush without being punishing for the deck while still being able to build your soul very quickly while still replenish your hand quite quickly as well. And on top of all the deck filtering that this deck is capable of. It's time to stop! And on top of it, it still more or less has the same pressure that the original Barrow Magnus do excess with the only drawback is that it lose one attack but come on man you're minusing 10 to 15k almost every turn with this deck what else do you need it for and it is safe to say this is also another deck that benefit from the nation that is linked to and that is dusted especially you have cards like force law and bifron to actually boost the draw power even further while still helping you to set up your drop zone and your soul of course the deck does social slower but here's the thing you don't really need to use the full benefit of Benny anyway and if you need more counter charge this is one of the very few decks that can run selfish and grabber just fine so the deck has all the pieces ready but that's my thoughts about it what do you guys think of the worshipper collab do you want more collab from this particular vtuber group even if it is not well known in the west do leave down in the comments below i will say this now i want more of this if they are keeping up with the quality of how the units is designed but yeah that's all i have for today take care of yourself don't forget to clap that sub button and this is mac mechanic signing out Let's go. Let's go. Let's go.